uh, welcome to this last module of this particular class uh, or you can say lecture uh, and uh, this is on micro machining right. So, along with micro machining uh, we are also looking at uh, CVD in particular which is your chemical vapor deposition. Now, uh, we have taken few examples uh, of sensors how we can fabricate uh, sensors using bulk micro machining or bulk plus surface micro machining or if it is a, 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 a actuator uh, that can actuate the mirror or it can be a cantilever uh, how can we use this bulk and surface micro machining right. Uh, we also see uh, we have also seen the uh, advantages and disadvantages of dry and wet etching. Now, uh, in the thin film deposition when you want to grow a th or deposit a thin film uh, there are two techniques we have already discussed PVD which is plasma uh, which is a physical vapor deposition and in this PVD there is uh, again uh, subdivision one is uh, evaporation and another one is sputtering. So, when you talk about evaporation you have uh, thermal evaporation and you have E beam evaporation and when you talk about sputtering, sputtering is a mechanical way of uh, dislodging the atoms from the uh, target uh, and deposit the film on the substrate right. So, when you talk about chemical vapor deposition the chemical vapor deposition have uh, inherently uh, better uh, or few advantages over uh, PVD and uh, those advantages are it can have uh, it will have a better uh, step coverage uh, the quality of the film is better uh, the uh, uh, and it is generally used to deposit uh, silicon and insulators. So, uh, depositing uh, uh, grow, growing a silicon uh, or uh, uh, SiO2 or Si3 and 4 silicon dioxide or silicon nitride with uh, uh, CVD is better. Also, uh, the purity of the film is better in case of chemical vapor deposition. So, having said that, uh, let us see what kind of chemical vapor deposition uh, are there and what exactly chemical vapor deposition means. If you recall, uh, we have seen this kind of uh, arrangement sometime when we were discussing about wet etching, uh, wet uh, oxidation and dry oxidation, right? Wet oxidation and dry oxidation. So, uh, chemical gas sources are thermally, optically or electrically plasma activated to react with the surface to deposit a layer and byproducts are pumped out from the chamber. So, you, uh, we were uh, introducing uh, O2 right at very high uh, temperature about 1100 degree centigrade right and uh, uh, the, uh, the, the byproduct was out of this particular furnace. Similarly, 1100. Similarly, in case of vapor right H 2 O right uh, the vapor of uh, what the water vapor were carried out uh, uh, carried inside this particular furnace and uh, it reacts with the uh, uh, with the silicon to form S i O 2 plus 2 H 2 O right which was the byproduct uh, and that would come out of the uh, of the chamber right of the furnace. So, point is point is that the byproduct will come out after reaction and that is what is written dry products are pumped out from the chamber. In a simplified model as a gas flows over the over the substrate film growth is determined by absorption, adsorption and reaction rates correct. So, you can see here the gas is flowing mean gas flow region gas phase interaction right transport to the surface there is a surface diffusion and a readsorption right same way there is a desorption and uh, uh, this is how the film starts growing. Uh, so, when it is adsorption uh, or, or if it is a uh, desorption then desorption occurs because of the uh, so first of nucleation island and step growth occurs which you can see here is a nucleation and then slowly a island will form uh, following by the step growth uh, and uh, of course, there is a desorption uh, which are the not uh, which are the byproducts and that can be pumped out of the chamber. So, the point is that using CVD we can deposit several films uh, uh, in particular insulator and silicon. So, when we say several that means just limited to insulators and silicon right. Now, in reality the deposition rate is affected by distance from the gas inlet right these are the factors specifics of the reaction 
and radial variance. How to improve the uniformity then right. So, you can tilt the substrate into flow right. You can see here we have tilted the substrate instead of placing substrate like this we have substrate placed in a this particular position right. So, we have tilted the substrate increase temperature along the substrate and single wafer processing right. These are tricks to inform the uh, improve the uniformity of the film. So, when you talk about CVD how many types of CVD are available right. So, we have four basic type of CVD that we will be talking about first one is atmospheric pressure CVD it is also called AP CVD. The advantages of this CVD are high deposition rate simple and high throughput. Disadvantages are poor uniformity and purity is less than LP CVD right. So, uh, what is used for AP CVD? AP CVD is used for uh, thick oxide deposition right. Now, when you talk about LP CVD, uh, LP CVD can be used at 0 0.2 to 20 torr advantage is excellent uniformity purity disadvantage is lower but reasonable deposition rate than AP CVD right is used for polysilicon deposition dielectric layer deposition and do doped dielectric deposition. Now, when you talk about <coughs> <coughs> metal organic CVD which is also called MO CVD its advantages are it is highly flexible can deposit semiconductors metals and dielectric right in P CVD or LP CVD uh, or AP CVD you know generally oxides are used or oxides are deposited or polysilicon is deposited, but in case of MO CVD we can also deposit semiconductors and metals. The disadvantage is be, being highly toxic and extremely expensive and environmental disposal costs are also very high. However, MO CVD is used for low cost uh, optical uh, 3, 4 technology right uh, some metallization processes which includes tungsten and copper. When you talk about plasma and NCVD which is your PE CVD plasmas are used to force reaction that would not be possible at low temperature right. So, plasmas are used to force reactions that would not be possible at low temperature. Advantages being uses low temperatures necessary for back end processing. Disadvantage is being plasma damage typically results and uh, used for dielectric coatings right. So, these are the advantages disadvantages and generally it is used for dielectric coatings what is PECVD. Also we can grow the advantages are low temperatures you see. So, we can we can deposit silicon dioxide or silicon nitride right at relatively low temperature like from 100 degree centigrade to 400 degree centigrade is a relatively low temperature that uh, plasma and then CVD chemical vapor deposition uh, uses and that is why uh, it is uh, used in MEMS uh, application MEMS based sensor fabrication which we have just seen where we can grow uh, silicon dioxide with PECVD. So, when you talk about LP CVD LPCVD typically uses silicon containing uh, compounds typically 100 percent silane SiH4 or 20 30 percent silane or 80 70 inert gas and which are reacted with wafer at 0 0.2 to 1 torr and about 575 to 650 degrees centigrade right. Uh, LPCVD is used for polysilicon for gates contacts polysilicon can be doped using diborane or arsine right B2H6 ASH, ASH3 or phosphine which is PH3 dope polysilicon makes good short interconnect lines right we know it. Thick oxide used for oscillation between metal interconnects right uh, these are also used with LPCVD right. Uh, doped sorry about this doped oxide uses uh, is useful for global planarization as well as nitrides and other dielectrics for isolation of capacitors like high K dielectric material for large capacitance. Right. So, uh, LP CVD is useful uh, as well since silicon nitride is used for encapsulation uh, that is sealing of the circuit to prevent contamination from moisture plastic used in packaging or air. So, uh, LP CVD is used in this particular uh, processes however, LP CVD consumes less amount of expensive gases as compared to AP CVD. Hmm. So, then how AP CVD works right another question to us would be how AP CVD works. 
So, we will see that APCVD later on. Let us first uh, see MOCVD. So, MOCVD many materials that we wish to deposit have low vapor pressure and thus are difficult to transport via gases right. So, what is the solution? The solution is to use MOCVD. So, if you look at the screen one solution to chemically attach the metal right that is gallium, aluminum, copper etcetera to an organic compound that has very high vapor pressure. Organic compounds often have very high vapor pressure uh, for example, alcohol has a strong order right. The organic material bond is very weak and can be broken via thermal means on wafer. Depositing the metal with very high pressure organic being pumped away right. So, care must be taken to ensure little of the organic byproducts are incorporated and carbon contamination and unintentional uh, are unintentional. Hydrogen incorporations are sometimes a problem. So, this is about MOCVD. When we talk about PCVD, so as you can see a system here there is a heated plate uh, there is a, a inert gas and process gas that we can insert in the uh, uh, in the system there is a RF power due to which there will be creation of plasma and when the gas is reacts with each other it will get deposited the film will get deposited on the wafer. So, what are what is exactly uh, why we have to use PECVD? PECVD so let us take an example here which is shown right over here. Now, if you have a oxidized silicon wafer with aluminum uh, metal coated on the wafer or deposited on the wafer and on this if I want to grow silicon dioxide you want to deposit silicon dioxide. Now, all the other methods they have extremely high temperature, but in case of PCVD this can be uh, grown or deposited at a lower temperature about 100 to 400 degrees centigrade There is an advantage of PCVD. So, suppose after metal lines like aluminum was deposited how would you deposit a conformal dielectric SiO2 or Si3 and 4 to isolate next metal layer right. So, if I want to have another metal layer I have to have a silicon dioxide in between these two metal right. This is another metal this is one metal right. So, this one would be my insulating material correct. This silicon dioxide would be an Insular. We have just taken an example of we have taken an example of gas sensor right where we were have a depositing a silicon uh, dioxide between a heater and interdigitated electrodes. So, solutions includes PECV deposition of dielectric when fast diffusion metal like copper are used this low temperature deposition becomes more important. So, what are the advantages of PECVD? The advantages of PECVD are first it is a low temperature process right. Second provides reasonable deposition rates. Third advantage being good film quality the quality of the film is excellent. Next advantage would be conformal. Finally, we have lower chance of cracking of films right these are the advantages of PECVD. While when you talk about disadvantages of PECVD, it mainly may leave unwanted byproduct on films, costlier, while the stoichiometry is not guaranteed. For example, SI and SIX and Y instead of SI3 and 4. So, this we do not know exactly it is SI3 and 4, or uh, we cannot uh, really guarantee the stoichiometry, right. These are the disadvantages or limitations of PECVD. So, why not CVD is commonly used in lab? When you see uh, except few uh, bigger fab labs generally CVDs are not commonly used and the reason is because of the safety factor. Safety factor. Hmm. Many gases that we used in CVD many gases used in CVD are toxic that is hazardous to humans, it is corrosive that it causes corrosion to stainless steel and other metals and it is flammable that is burns when exposed to an ignition source and an oxygen source. It is also explosive and or pyrophoric that is spontaneously burn or explode in air right it spontaneously burns or explodes in air moisture or when exposed to oxygen. So, these are the reasons why you will not find CVD 
very common in laboratory. Now, if you accept, if, if you see, sorry, <coughs> if you see, uh, gas is hazardous effect, flammable limits, and exposure limit, then you will see that ammonia is a toxic and corrosive gas. Flammable limits about 16 to 25 percent, while exposure limit is just 25 ppm. Same way, we talk about silane 0.5 ppm, arsine 0 0.05, phosphine 0 0.3, hydrogen chloride 5, for diborane 0 0.01 dichlorosilane 5. So, the exposure limit is extremely small right. You need to be extremely careful when you are using CVD. Again you see the flammable limits also that it is pyrophoric when it is silane and phosphine while hydrogen uh, is between 4 and 74, diborane 198, dichlorine uh, chlorosilane about 4 to 99 and most of the gases are either toxic or corrosive or flammable. Right. For example, if the corrosiveness comes, then ammonia and hydrogen chloride are corrosive. If it is toxicity, then uh, all the gases like ammonia, silane, arsine, phosphine, uh, nitrogen, ox, uh, 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 diborane, uh, as well as dichlorosilane, this all are uh, toxic. And when we talk about flammable gases, then silane, phosphine, and diboro, diborane, and dichlorosilane, these are toxic gases. Oh, so, uh, these are flammable gases not toxic they are flammable gases right. So, in short what we understand is CVD can be used CVD can be used for depositing uh, insulator or an oxide layer insulator is oxide or ni silicon nitride layer uh, it can also be used to deposit uh, silicon and uh, it has an it has advantages over PVD in terms of its uh, film quality in terms of better step coverage. Uh, uh, and uh, there are several kinds of uh, CVD and what what is interesting to us is one that we used for growing uh, wet oxidation uh, for growing oxide at high temperature, but another one that, it, uh, that is also interesting to us uh, for this particular MAMS based sensor is PECVD. Why PECVD? Because PECVD can grow insulating material at a lower temperature lot of applications we require uh, uh, insulator between two metals and we can take help of uh, PECVD right. So, uh, this would be the end of this particular uh, lecture uh, which consisted of several modules and uh, I uh, wish and I will urge uh, you guys to that you guys will read again. Uh, the first is I wish that you guys read again, second is I will urge you to read again. Uh, uh, because uh, it's it's a very important to understand how to use micro machining, and then uh, it is an also important to understand what kind of uh, devices you can fabricate using micro machining. Also, what kind of chemical vapor deposition techniques are used, and uh, uh, understanding this is very important because when we actually go to a fab lab and see how the things are uh, uh, executed, you will you will understand because you have already covered this thing in theory. Right. When we talk about photoresist, positive photoresist, negative photoresist, lithography, uh, we talk about um, uh, BHF or we talk about silicon etching, right. We talk about the deposition of gold or chrome or other any other metal. Uh, uh, so, in uh, all these things, all these things we are talking about photoresist developer, right. So, if we when we know it on theory, when we know the process flow, then it will be easier for us to understand when in one of the course that I may be taking uh, in uh, uh, following semester where uh, you uh, where the students will be shown how the uh, device is fabricated in a fab lab environment. So, all these things would be useful when you have to understand uh, uh, from fab lab perspective right. So, uh, till then you guys uh, go through this lecture uh, have fun right enjoy your life. Uh, it is a it is a not so difficult things, but uh, uh, it is important to thoroughly understand this subject and uh, I am sure you will do well and use this uh, knowledge to create novel devices.